Well, hello again, guys, and welcome back to this month's episode of The Humble Mechanic. Once again, it's been a very busy month. Not really sure what I'm going to do with you guys yet. We'll figure something out. Right now, we have a little business to take care of outside, so that's something. Safety first. Piece of cake. Well, that certainly got the heart rate up. Good exercise for the day, right? Uh, if you don't know what this is all about, well, shame on you. You need to be watching more videos here, right? But uh, that gives me a good idea of where we need to go from here. So I'll sure be sure to do that in the next five years or so. I don't know. So in my incredibly cluttered and dirty little workshop in here, uh, you haven't seen this yet. I traded in my Juki after I finished the 48 Chevy. Uh, saw this Conso 99 in a classified ad. Still not exactly what I want because it's still not a walking foot. Although it does zigzags. Um, but should be a much beefier uh, machine, I'm guessing. And when I picked it up, um, the people I was buying it from had it out in an enclosed trailer, an extension cord running out from the house, and Mama was in the trailer sewing, I guess to prove that it was working to me. Um, I mean, that the listing said it was working, and I was going to believe them, and I actually got money off. I traded in my Juki on this machine. Uh, apparently, Mama does some sewing machine repair, and she was willing to give me some money back uh, and in exchange for this one also. So, um, she got it to work, but then it cut the thread, I think the bobbin thread, uh, and I wasn't too concerned about it, but I can absolutely not get it to pick up the bobbin thread. I checked out a video online of a guy uh, getting the bobbin going and threading the machine, and it seems my case is a little bit different than the one he was showing. So I've got to look that up. Now I'm doing a very fun project that I've been trying to get done for, oh man, um, not quite a year yet, but... I'm on the last legs of it, and I'm very excited to get it done and published because it's just fun. It's it's one of those things I just really love doing. So I had to break out the Bel Air here at my $1 auction sewing machine, 
and uh, I've been spending maybe half an hour trying to get that thing to sew right. So I've got this this weight on a piece of webbing, and this thing I probably need a new belt for it. But the motor just it's not happy. It just does not want to turn especially through this thicker stuff um, so I'm doing it I'm do I'm sewing by hand with the old Bel Air sewing machine so that's fun I wanted to show you a quick sneak peek of the project just because I'm so excited to uh, get it up and running so how do I want to do this hmm okay you're gonna play peeping Tom real quick you ready? Well, you can say you saw it here first, folks. I'm sorry, that's just all I want to show. Oh, you saw the the leg there. That's all I want to show you. And but it'll be coming soon, so don't you worry. Well, we're on the subject. I can give you an idea of what's coming up soon as well. Working on the fenders, just, you know how it goes, just uh, fill, sand, repeat once again. This left-hand one was really, really bad. Um, at one time, all of this was just mangled, so I really had to go over that a lot. Um, but I think I got it. This is the one that I welded the new bottom down there into the patch panel. Uh, I did some metal work, um, bumping some stuff out that the previous guy just, he put a lot of filler into it, and I, di I did a little bit of fixing. You'll see all this coming up. I'm not going to get too in-depth in, you know, one video just on fenders. I think I've said in the past, I'm going to do these in the hood and the doors and all that at the same time. Right-hand one wasn't nearly as bad. Um, almost getting close with it. Uh, just did some guide coat this morning, reapplied. Um, just chasing my tail, you know. You think you find a bad spot like this was in here, then you connect the two together with filler because then you have a gap between. Then, you know, the spot just grows. And uh, it just takes just takes doing it to figure that out. So, um, must be a change in the weather coming. The flies are, the flies are getting active. They're getting worried. So, anyway, fenders going there. Behind me, I brought the right-hand side of the suspension and drive line for the Corvair. That is back at work. I've already got the other side complete. That video will be coming soon. Uh, you can see I've got to throw all this in the old... That is an ancient Eastwood vibrating tumbler. Um, probably the next tool that I'm going to reinvest in is a newer, bigger one of those. Um, this thing has served me so well, but it's just too small. That was one of the first things I got after graduating restoration school. That was one of the first uh, investments I made for this kind of work. Well, let's just get these going now. So, secret recipe, we got our ceramics in there, little dash of Dawn. Little touch of, whoa, way too much water. Way more water than I wanted. That's okay. I won't put that in there, but everything else can go. That's going to de-rust and degrease at the same time. And there's the rear strut rod alignment bolt. Yeah, it looks like I'm losing a lot of ceramic here. Surprised I have any left. It's the original ceramic I bought with the machine. So, okay. All right, this lid is on its last legs here. I'm surprised it's holding together, but go with God, good sir. 
I'll plug that in a moment. Um, yeah, so I already did the left-hand side. It's all together. Uh, bushings uh, actually didn't do too bad on the bushings in the press. Um, I've heard I've heard kind of bad things, and Clark's kind of I won't say paints a grim picture, but they claim it's pretty difficult. Um, but it went pretty well. So, and then of course I replaced U joints, and this right side front strut rod broke on me. You can see how deteriorated it got on this end. Got pretty thin in there. So, um, actually, I wonder if it wasn't being machined by the control rod or control arm. So I've got to look for another one of those, uh, but just do what we do. Now we get to listen to this thing. Do you remember these? Maybe some of you still use them. I don't know. Are they still for sale out there? Seems like maybe they are like some products you get still have these. I remember these before I ever really saw zip ties as a kid, but you know, as a kid do you really pay attention? But I certainly certainly remember these going way back. Why am I mentioning these? Well, funny little story. So, there's an antique store in Wichita I like to go to. And this was there. An enlisted man's hat, probably from World War II era. Very small. Very small guy. Of course, it would have been a, a young kid, more, most likely. But just a cool, cool old hat. Well, this had the price tag on it, and it had one of these around the band. And then a paper price tag with the twine, you know around this. And I went up to pay and the smart young lady still wearing a mask because it's fun and a fashion statement I guess uh, just grabbed that price tag or this and just pulled on it. What a heartbreaker you know uh, <laughs> I still wanted the hat, but I was like, uh, did you seriously just break the hat band? <sighs> so, I don't know what I'm going to do. I didn't, I, you know, it was a young lady, probably college age, and I wasn't going to make a big deal of it. It's not who I am, and I still wanted it still wanted the hat, you know, it wasn't just a crazy price on the thing, but kind of fun, funny and sad at the same time, that, oh well. Well, I've uh, started compiling a list with everything that I feel you guys have done wrong in life. Um, it, it's going to take a few hours to get through this. No, I'm just kidding. So I don't know that I have anything too terribly profound this week, or uh, hopefully I don't uh, start running off at the mouth and uh, just keep repeating myself over and over. But last Sunday in our adult Sunday school class, we were going over John chapter 8. Uh, I'm going to read verse 2 through 11, and... As I was uh, sitting there listening to the discussion and participating somewhat myself, um, I started having a lot of other thoughts not related to the conversation. And so I just wanted to go back over it and see some of the things that I was seeing. Um, and once again, it may not, this may not be too fluent, you know, but uh, we'll get through it. Um, so Jesus went up to the Mount of Olives. Verse 2, At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts, where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. 
The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. In the law, Moses, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, Go now and leave your life of sin. So in this, to me, this is uh, just a great little picture of the salvation story within the salvation story. Right? We've got Jesus, the Messiah. We've got the woman who we could consider us, or if you are living of the world, we are to be in the world, but not of the world, and there are certainly a lot of people running around out there who are living for and of the world. And we have the Pharisees, <coughs> who are um, certainly organized religion. They are not living... Um, so, above everything else, when we are living for Christ, we are to love God more than anything else, and we are to love each other. Greatest commandments, right? The Pharisees and religion are those people far more interested in keeping everyone in line, obeying every single rule, dotting every T and crossing every I, um, whether it is scriptural or not, uh, it's about control, it's about power, it's about money, it's about influence. It is not about love, and it is not about God. That is incredibly prevalent in the church today. It is incredibly prevalent in the world today. That's what the Pharisees were about. Let me grab my water here. And I have no idea, there was <laughs> no doubt there was a certain element of them um, that were legitimately primarily concerned with Mosaic Law. Um, that, was, that was the relationship with God up to this point. So you do need to cut some, some slack, but what they were doing um, was a complete lack of love, right? So we have Jesus minding his own business. He went to the temple court. He's the rock star of the day. A crowd shows up. He begins to teach them. He loves people. He loves you and me. He loves people then. He loves them now. Um, so he's doing this, and again, the Pharisees are losing control is what they see. That's all they see. So, once again, they're coming up with a plan to stop this guy. So, they want to see if Jesus is going to violate the law, and then they would have a reason to uh, get rid of him, sweep him under the rug. So, they grab this woman. My first question is, where did they get her from? Where did they conveniently find a woman caught in the act of adultery? I have a nagging feeling in the back of my mind that one of these very Pharisees uh, was involved with her. But, I mean, maybe, maybe not. But either way, somebody knew about her. Uh, conveniently enough to get her, right? Why hadn't they taken care of this situation previous to this account? Oh, hey, Jesus is in the temple courts teaching. Quick, find a woman in adultery. 
No, it it wouldn't happen like that. They knew about her beforehand, right? I'm kind of thinking they were involved with her, at least one of them in some way. But that's that's the hypocritical nature of religion. Uh, what what goes for me does not go for you. Um, the rules apply here to me, or to you, but not to me. Anyway, so they grab this woman, um, caught in sin, which we all are, um, before we are covered with the blood of the Lamb. And they are literally willing to kill her to prove a point. I beg your pardon? I mean, this book, front to back, that's not God's character. Wanting to kill anyone to prove a point. That's religion. That's the world. That is not Jesus. And you think about the public disgrace she went through. She's There's a crowd around Jesus. There's a crowd, oh man, all of a sudden there's a crowd of all the religious leaders and she's pulled into the center of them. Yikes. Wouldn't want to be there. Um, I love what Jesus does. Mostly he doesn't do anything, right? He completely diffuses the situation by doing nothing. Well, I mean, he writes in the dust and there's there's perhaps a lot of debate and conjecture about what exactly he's doing. I personally would side with the camp that says, says he is listing maybe not names, but I can see him writing down sins that these Pharisees are, are themselves guilty of. There again, the hypocritical nature shows up of these guys trapped in their religious mindset um, but it's so great to see Jesus writing out sins and then starting with the oldest Pharisees they all start to melt you know you know looking around see if anyone's paying attention to them and slowly start walking backwards out of the crowd because Jesus knew that, oh, Jimbo there was guilty of stealing something, and Tyrone, you know, he's been looking sideways at his neighbor's wife, and, uh, you know, oh, you know, so forth and so on. I doubt, you know, Jesus does everything out of love, so. But what a great thing. He doesn't accuse anybody, the woman or the Pharisees. He doesn't do anything. If anything, he sort of agrees with their, uh, with what they try to do. You know, uh, if any one of you is without sin, sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Okay, go ahead. Who's going to, who here among you guys is going to admit he is completely without sin? Whoa! Well, you'd be putting yourself on a level with God, wouldn't you, if you were going to admit that? But he does it. And he is the one without sin. He is the very one he says could be uh, the one to throw a stone at her. But does he throw a stone at her? No! He is love. He is freedom. Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? Then neither do I condemn you. Go now and leave your life of sin. No person does that. People are ready to knock her dead right in the head. You know? A terrible situation. A terrible thing they were trying to do. Jesus was the only one that uh, was out was without sin that could, um, you know, 
would be the one that could throw a stone at her. There's another thought. He is the stone. Uh, the cornerstone. But anyway, and he doesn't. So I guess what I want to get out of all this is... Uh, I come across so many people um, wanting to use faith and religion as a control. And I'm always surprised at how many people I hear about um, still try to control themselves and maybe others in their family or so forth in Mosaic law. Like, I know, I know of several Christians that won't eat pork because of the Old Testament Mosaic law. Well, all of that is talked about and taken care of in the New Testament. If you're a Christian, um, I mean, you do what you want. I don't, it doesn't bother me. I mean, bacon's awesome and I'm going to keep on enjoying it. Um, but Christ was a fulfillment of all those things. And we kind of need to get past <laughs> some things, but uh, there seems to be an awful lot of issue with control in the church. Um, yeah, there's a lot of other issues uh, going along with the terrible path that the world's going and the church just going along with it. That's a whole other situation and it's a terrible thing and it's a huge mistake. Um, it just proves you have no clue or concept what God wants of you or you have no interest in uh, living the truth, freeing people from a life of sin uh, and really salvation. You. Uh, but if, if, any, if I get any point across here, it's, it's the very last verse, Neither do I condemn you, Jesus said. Go now and leave your life of sin. True faith and true, true faith and a life that has been truly given to God is a life of freedom and love. That is what Jesus is displaying here to a sinful woman. Religion and the world was ready to kill her. The world trapped her in a life of sin and the religious spirit was ready to kill her. Christ wanted her on his side. He wanted her in heaven with him. Truth and love in Jesus, death and entrapment in the world and religion. That's what I'm trying to get across. All of us are either the woman or were involved with the Pharisees. I hope you're the woman and you choose to go and leave your life of sin and live it just like Jesus displays here. Show his love, show his truth, show his freedom. I think that was long enough. That actually turned out longer. Now, let's get to this list of everything I see you guys doing wrong, and then uh, we'll let you go. I'm sorry. Bad joke. Um, that is all I have for you, guys. I'm praying for you. Every time I, I think about you, um, I would appreciate you do the same. I have... Uh, many many things going things are slowing down at work so hopefully I will be able to get more videos up I think I only got one between 
usually I get three car videos or project videos in between the Humble Mechanic monthly video and uh, I think I only got one when I took down the shop sign last month so uh, maybe I can do better got uh, stuff going on the pickup stuff going on the Corvair I've got this peephole project going so hopefully hopefully we can see uh, my thoughts talking too much I'm starting to get indigestion or something and I, I just don't know what I'm saying anymore I, I talk too much right so hey thanks for coming along <laughs> I'm getting slap happy ah, God bless you guys we'll see you on the next one I don't know what's going on anymore